Hello everyone, it's George and welcome back to Call of Dragons. As a dedicated free-to-play player who played this game for more than one year, I'm excited to share some insider tips and tricks with you. Stick around and let's dive in. Today, as you can see, I'm gonna showcase uh, the amazing gameplay of Call of Dragons. As I have mentioned before, um, Call of Dragons has the best combat gameplay in any Kingdom Builder games. So today, like we have a perfect opportunity to see uh, the tier 5 players against tier 5 players fighting. And we will understand what kind of meta and what kind of uh, hero pairs they are using. Of course, this is the latest season. Uh, season sob um, so like at first we need to understand which kind of heroes are the most popular at first uh, there is the like newest heroes Margaret and zaida um, the green heroes which, hero which you can see the newest heroes uh, well I, like i have had many different opinions and the uh, views that they are overpowered so far i still see a lot of syndrome and fragar um, i guess people are still checking uh, magrat and zaida and understanding how the playstyle is working and in general if we're gonna zoom out we will see that we can see way more marksman legions uh, than before i guess uh, people are finding out that long range warfare is actually amazing uh, all mark marksmen needed in before was the same range as mages and they would destroy the enemies right but still uh, the most popular well i guess in terms of popularity of through the this fight it's pretty obvious that there are way more marksmen uh, like and uh, the second place is mage legions and of course the least popular one is cavalry uh, and it's same with tier 5 players because here like almost every single legion which you can see is tier 5 players legion from the left side um, the na the nova avengers uh, 30 billion power an alliance and from the right side that that's the alliance noir the alliance of nefisto i think the highest power player in call of dragons and the alliance is quite strong 15.6 uh, billion power in terms of simply the power of the players well uh, the choices are obviously pretty simple uh, like infantry rallies are hitting enemies the mages and the marksmen are trying to defeat enemies ranged legions and so far uh, like meta is pretty obvious now at some point uh, lilia and the uh, wellin was still the main choice and we can see still a lot of lilias and wellings uh, around the battlefield uh, but uh, like through the time is passing more and more uh, we do see actually a lot of uh, Bertrand and Dohars um, you know, I guess that's a beauty of the games in general whenever there is like constant updates and in regards of the gameplay that newest heroes should be the most uh, like strongest ones because like in my opinion if new hero heroes will come out and they will, won't be as stronger than the uh, last heroes then what's the point of uh, making new heroes right the new heroes should be the strongest ones that's the beauty of the gameplay in any kind of games if you are making a new content for the game and the new content is bad it means the update is bad right so it's pretty simple i can understand how hard it is for free to play players to have every single heroes in this game because well the pay to win aspect of the game is simple uh, more money you spend the faster you are progressing throughout the game uh, but well before you're gonna join any uh, mobile game you need to understand that the pay to win aspect will be always there uh, so right now we are watching uh, two alliances uh, whose pay to win aspects have been pretty high and they are fighting for the territory uh, which uh, they are stuck inside this is a small choke point and Neuer is trying to access this side and NA is trying to defend uh, actually it's pretty surprising um, how much uh, NA has been uh, keeping the Neuer away from their land 
but in my opinion it will be super super hard for NA to uh, keep Neuer um, on the ground simply because they have like unlimited amount of resources and the armies and the people who are 24 7 online now NA is slim alliance is like Halskin right now we can see Halskin fighting uh, one of the best uh, Call of Dragons content creators which I see on YouTube and which I appreciate a lot because more content creators are playing this game and showcasing uh, on the videos on YouTube uh, more and more popular this game will get and of course uh, popularity of this game may benefit uh, players, content creators, game designers and everybody who is in touch in Call of Dragons I'm really excited in terms of new season um, simply because I'm a marksman main and whenever marksman heroes are coming up I'm always excited I want to see more and more uh, in terms of marksman I actually was waiting some specific wyvern hero legendary hero flying one uh, but I guess it will be for the next cycle, cycle. Uh, for, from this cycle what marksman players actually got is the Garrison hero which is really important because Garrison works in, the game, in this game in a way that for example if you are a mage player you have to have Tohar as your Garrison leader because Tohar will be using uh, mage troops in priority so if you are forcing mage troops it's better to have mage uh, hero as a Garrison leader same as marksman and same as any other uh, legion type build in the game well Halskin actually tanked a lot here uh, this push was quite hard in my opinion uh, and yeah like whenever you are fighting with tier 5 players you need to understand that uh, if you are staying alive more than 10 seconds it means you are strong because uh, tier 5 players deal a lot of damage they have every single skill and artifact and warped uh, I'll upgrade it almost to maximum if not to the maximum so uh, damage from those guys are extremely high and uh, yeah like in general as a tier 4 player uh, it's always nice to observe uh, tier 5 players fighting against tier 5 players because simply you can understand what's the meta heroes uh, what's the meta legions or maybe there is something weird in terms of hero pairs which we will see here well, as I have mentioned, um, I don't see any cavalry, like there is like a maximum 5 to 10 cavalry legions from this amount of legions on the battlefield. And um, I have all, always stated that uh, cavalry legions in, in general need some more love uh, in Call of Dragons, in my opinion, because, uh, well, for myself, I use them only to run forts. And I actually know more people who use calves only for forts than uh, people who are using cows for fighting. So, like, I think that's the main reason why I think um, calves should have more options uh, in terms of uh, fighting and getting merits rather than just like being an. Uh, super super fast car dealing almost no damage well actually uh, cavalry legions uh, whenever there is a big war it's pretty hard to use them because there is no flanking position uh, and if you want to be a flanker then I guess forest eagles are is better choice than normal cavalry units and yeah, I guess uh, farming uh, farmers and getting merits by that and uh, running forts uh, as a cavalry units, that's the most beneficial option and most wise option to use those heroes. Now, uh, well, at the beginning of the Call of Dragons, um, uh, infantry was at, at almost on the same category, in my opinion, uh, as a cavalry, but after the introduction of Gorish and Skolgul and the uh, Spirit Bone Torque, the new artifact for Gorish it actually changed because um, infantry units got different ideas different play styles uh, in terms of gameplay uh, before we had only like Ma Garwood, Madeline, Nika that's the main heroes and they were like mainly defensive ones but after the Gorish and Skolgul uh, I think uh, infantry players got more offensive hero pair which will deal a lot of damage with the 5 legion taunt for the Gorish artifact well that's already amazing for the war times right this artifact made Gorish and Skolgul twice as good as it was before in my opinion 
Uh, in terms of cavalry units, I guess um, like new heroes for on deal um, uh, and Theodore wasn't that impressive, but in my opinion, Theodore has is like one of the sneakiest underrated heroes, which I think is amazing. Like the HP reduction 30% and on awakening skill 25% less normal attack damage for cavalry my hero is just too good to not to be great, right? So. Uh, I expect in the future uh, seasons a lot more Theodore um, and a lot more Theodore centric uh, hero pairs for cavalry players uh, because I think that's a main hero which is really really underrated um, I don't think why people are still using uh, Emory and Bakshi whenever there is a great hero as a foreign deal um, well I guess foreign deal is mainly used as a garrison hero but still I think as an open field uh, he deals a lot of damage. Uh, in terms of uh, ranged legions, I think, yeah, marksmen and uh, mages have been the best ones so far. Uh, at first, it was all about mages, but after uh, marksmen got uh, long range warfare and uh, marksmen got same amount of uh, range as mage legions, well, uh, it got changed. Now, I think, in my honest opinion, uh, marksmen are way better than mages. Uh, but yeah, let's see what's gonna happen uh, in the future. Uh, we are waiting for a new faction also, which will bring a lot more heroes. And I think whenever a new faction will come out, uh, more epic heroes will be coming out too, because we have way less epic heroes in the game. Uh, it's pretty normal that the new heroes are legendary ones, the ones which are coming out um, almost every uh, second month or every season. Uh, and like yeah we have seen um, epic artifacts uh, now it's time for us to see more epic um, heroes too right because for a free to play players epic heroes are the easiest one to get and maybe the new epic heroes will bring a lot more value to the game well for whenever we are going to zoom out um, we can see how much uh, legions we have and what type of legions they are uh, like before, what you can see, like 95% was mages, and it was basically ranged fight, mages against mages. But yeah, after the long range warfare, we do see like a lot more, like 50% mages and 50% marksmen for the both sides. And the third best uh, legion type in the game currently, in terms of pure quantity, is I think infantry. Uh, because like doesn't really matter how strong your uh, le major legions and uh, marksman legions are as an alliance if you don't have good infantry uh, you won't gonna push uh, you won't gonna defend uh, pushing without infantry it's really really awkward because you don't have a tank uh, in general that's how uh, pushing in and out works in Call of Dragons. Your infantry players are moving up, uh, your ranged uh, legions are defending them and moving up together. That's like generally the strategy in terms of infantry in this game, and that's why uh, Goresh and Skolgul brought a different dimension. Yeah, we can see Nephistos, uh, Goresh, and Skolgul, the highest power player in the game. Uh, well, it's pretty obvious he's tanking a lot of legions right here. Um, and like, if you are tanking 5 to 6 to 10 uh, tier 5 uh, ranged legions as a tank for more than 2 minutes, it means that uh, you are not a joke. Uh, and yeah, I guess uh, maybe in the future season I will be against Nephisto or maybe I will be with him uh, it's, it will be pretty interesting if i will ever manage to get to the server with the highest uh, power alliances because yeah that's where all the uh, job is done that's where the main fights are happening throughout the all the kingdoms right um, like we got really lucky today that we have such an amazing gameplay uh, from both alliances uh, in terms of pure quantity i think neuer has a lot more legions on the battlefield uh, but it's pretty obvious that uh, na is not a joke uh, whenever you um, like your enemy has way more legions on the battlefield and you are still uh, standing strong with way less legions it means that you are really really strong by yourself 
Um, I'm actually really surprised uh, when I see so many Marksman uh, Legions. Uh, when I started Call of Dragons, actually, Marksman was one of the less popular Legions, and uh, like I was the one who was trying to main Marksman from the day one. But yeah, I guess now I have a lot more friends, a lot more mar Marksman mains, because... Yeah, I can honestly say that here, uh, for example, there are like... Uh, 95% marksmen and 5% mages like I don't know like I, I only see arrows and I see a couple of mage uh, icons on the battlefield which uh, determines that it's a mage and marksman legion uh, well like in general it's always fun to observe uh, it's always fun to observe and learn from the players who are constantly fighting that's the only way for tier 5 player to have fun in this game is to just uh, fight and get as much merits as possible and winning it what it's what it matters right and after the introduction of the king um, uh, reputation or achievement in call of dragons i think there will be a lot more dramas a lot more fights a lot more uh, like uh, deep uh, diplomacy uh, which will be pretty pretty interesting uh, in terms of gameplay of call of dragons i'm honestly really surprised um, how things are changing in call of dragons uh, I was not expecting at all anything like king and queen or home servers, if I will say like three months ago or four months ago. But well, after the first year anniversary, we have been getting more and more updates, some more and more crucial updates. We don't see any more mistakes in terms of updates, which which is great, um, which which is what we all want to progress this game in a way that we will have more and more uh, new players who are joining the game. Well, whenever I see Magroth and Zayd the Legion here, I'm already excited. I wish I will be lucky at the Wheel of Destiny and I will get uh, the pay to win Marksman Hero. And of course, the second Marksman Hero will be available through Lucky Spins and it will be uh, much more easier for free-to-play players to get the uh, more free-to-play accessible marksman hero. Uh, yeah, like I think in two weeks maximum my server will start a new season and uh, I will start my journey on season sub 2 um, which I have been looking forward to. I gathered like 30k gems um, I, I, I have to spend 5k for the migration and whatever is left is left for Wheel of Destiny and Artifact Compendium. Of course, um, in terms of artifacts, my choice is like Gold Crest, uh, uh, Rattle Spear, the new artifact for new Marksman Heroes. That's my main choices as always. And in terms of Wheel of Destiny, of course, uh, pay to win. A hero for marksman is priority uh, and uh, like if i will get both marksman heroes from the wheel of destiny then i think it will be uh i should be super super lucky well it's pretty understandable meta is shifting towards marksmen uh, from this fight we are seeing way more marksmen legions and way less mages and i think that's how it should be um, how it will be in the future at least for the season sub, sub 2 uh, which is pretty normal um, uh, marksman has highest physical damage uh, in terms of uh, stats and giving them same amount of range um, as mages uh, it would hurt uh, especially fights against marksmen and mages uh, like this fight will almost never stop uh, it will go and on and on and on and i won't gonna have much of a topic to continue speaking about i guess i covered a lot of things uh, i'm not sure if i will be adding timestamps to this video because i have spoke about in general about a lot of things now uh, meanwhile if you like uh, what i have spoken in this video and while meanwhile i have been talking you can uh, simply uh, view the amazing combat gameplay of Call of Dragons, which I think is the number one in terms of Kingdom Builder games. If you like my videos, press low like, subscribe, share. It always gives me more and more motivation to make uh, more content for this game. Um, I hope everybody will have an amazing day, morning or night, wherever you are, guys. Uh, I'm gonna see you very, very soon. Good luck and bye-bye.